Thank you. Hi, everyone. My topic today is uh, aestheticizing Kung Fu cinema, Bruce Lee and martial ideation. <clears throat> so due to mass and rapid production uh, in 1970s, Kung Fu films are disregarded by film scholars as chop uh, characteristics of a disjoint storyline, ridiculous acting, and excessive violence and shabby quality. However, not all martial arts films are considered aesthetically vulgar. Kung Fu cinema's counterpart, Wu Xia Cinema, is valued for its technical achievements since the 1970s, um, such as King Hu's um, you know, A Touch of Sand, or more recently, Hao Xiao Xian's The Assassins. <clears throat> One reason for such a difference in reception is that Wu Xia Cinema is considered as an expression of Yi ideation. Ideation is regarded as a core of Chinese art since the Six Dynasties. The conventional view is that portraying ideation in cinema refers to the process of making present the absence, namely the abstract, the intangible, and the invisible. Since Wu Xia cinema is, con uh, is descended from the long tradition of portraying the absence, it can potentially offer a higher and lasting aesthetic experience, as you can see in you know, Hero. In contrast, Kung Fu cinema is problematic due to its implausible merge of the presence and the absence. On the one hand, it emphasizes the presence by highlighting realism and authenticity. On the other hand, the absence is shown by the uh, genre's intimate connection to the operatic tradition, stressing the amplification of emotion through stylized martial arts performance, such as Liang Xiang, uh, striking a presence during the entrance, and acrobatic routines. In this presentation, I will argue that Bruce Lee's film manifests the ideational nature of Kung Fu cinema, by ideation, I refer to a specific configuration of the presence and the absence that contains powerful emotion in tranquility. In Kung Fu cinema, the presence and the absence are configured as ge action and zhi stasis. When the two are merged to express a state of serenity, uh, it evokes what I call wu yi, martial ideation. In the case of Bruce Lee's film, Martial ideation is expressed as the Taoist notion of Wu, nothingness, and it is represented choreographically, cinematographically, and narratively through the motifs of negation and circulation, which I will elaborate later. In this light, Li is one of the pioneers in Kung Fu cinema that treats martial art performance not so much as a spectacle, but an embodied knowledge that connects Kung Fu practice with Chinese aesthetics and philosophy. The concept of ideation has its root in Chinese aesthetics or literary criticism. My interpretation of ideation is derived from the frameworks of two scholars in Chinese aesthetics. One is Wang Changling, uh, a poet in the Tang Dynasty, and the other, Zhong Baihua, a theorist in Chinese aesthetic during the Republican period. In Shi Ge, on poetic style, Wang outlined three rhymes, which is the rhyme of object, wu jing, uh, the rhyme of emotion or affect, uh, qing jing, um, yi jing, the rhyme of ideation. So um, this is my translation of the passage. Um, the first rhyme is wu jing, concerning poetry about mountains and rivers. The poet needs to amplify the images of the precious stones and prominent hues. He needs to concentrate and immerge himself into the environment. After capturing the essence of the images, he needs to focus and carefully manifest them through his hands. In so doing, he can achieve faithfulness in shape. That's the realm of object. The second realm is Qing Jing, the realm of affect. It requires the author to have a personal, in-depth experience of different emotions in life. By unleashing all these emotions in all possible directions, they can express the object dynamically and genuinely. The final stage is Yi Jing. It's, an, it's also an authentic expression of emotion, but it goes further to incorporate reflexivity in the heart. In so doing, the author can obtain the absence of object uh, portrayed. Wong makes a crucial point concerning the formulation of ideation. It is not a stroke of genius, but a step-by-step -step process that requires the synthesis of object, affect, and ideation. It is a stabilized day after the uh, reproduction of rea reality and also the amplification of emotions. Zhong Baihua, on the other hand, argues that ideation is the synthesis of xu, uh, absence, and shi. Um, xu, xu shi wei yi jing de di xiang. In a Chinese mountain river painting, for example, ideation is sketched through the interplay of um, the visible emptiness or invisible emptiness, white space, 
and the visible landscape black ink. The former cannot be present or absent without the latter, or vice versa. Merging the idea of Zhong and Huang, it is possible to develop a new framework for the concept of ideation applicable to the study of Kung Fu cinema. So the first question is, what the presence and the absence are in Kung Fu cinema? My proposition is that they are expressed as action and stasis. The Chinese character, Wu uh, Martial Arts, exhibits such a fusion. According to Shou um, it's the first dictionary in China, so uh, Wu consists of two parts, uh, Ge and Zhi. So the former refers to stop in contemporary Chinese, and the latter is a Chinese weapon similar to a halberd. In this light, martial arts has a double meaning in Chinese. It refers to the presence and the absence of a conflict, or in essence, uh, action and stasis. In Kung Fu cinema, the synthesis of action and stasis is conventionally expressed in three ways, choreographic, cinematographic and narrative. Uh, choreographically, um, it is the pause burst pause pattern referring to the insertion of pauses after a series of punches, kicks, or blocks or parries in the fight scenes. Cinematographically, such a pattern can be demonstrated by the camera when it becomes uh, static to match with the pause uh, of the action. Narratively, uh, it is embodied in scene where the hero is caught between the dilemma of taking action or uh, remaining still. Um, in terms of uh, narrative structure, action sequences are separated by moments of stasis devoted to the plot and character development. However, although film scholars have identified the significance of action and stasis as the essential components of Kung Fu cinema, they fail to understand how the interaction contribute to different aesthetic experiences. The current framework offered by uh, the English language scholarship focuses on the amplification of the emotion rather than the stabilization. This tendency to seek motion emotion uh, is one of the legacies left by the Chinese operatic tradition, such as Peking opera. Nevertheless, the Chinese opera's emphasis on express expressivity and theatricality to some extent marginalizes the role that the philosophical tradition plays in real Kung Fu learning and practice. Uh, as Matthew said yesterday, uh, as an actor, you need to show emotion, but as a martial artist, you can't. So the operatic performance functions as entertainment and therefore inevitably stresses the magnification of emotions, whereas real Kung Fu fighting demands a high degree of control and stabilization. In other words, the hegemony of the operatic mode in the study of Kung Fu cinema, to some extent problematic in the sense that it fails to represent the wholeness of Chinese aesthetics, which does not merely focus on the emotional dimension, but also the ideation. In the case of Bruce Lee, the ideational dimension is manifest in the Taoist Wu, uh, nothingness, a tranquility characteristic of constant transformation of action and stasis. The idea that Lee's martial art aesthetics is based on the low notion of fluidity is not something new. Um, cultural critics and film scholars have been crit uh, scrutinizing key scenes in Lee's films that manifest uh, Jeet Kune Do's premise of fluidity. Cato uh, writes that the uh, choreography of Fist of Fury demonstrated Taoist notion of chaos and spontaneity as Lee dissolved a deadlock by biting his opponent's foot. Uh, David Broadwell, turns out Chuck Norris' defeat in The Way of the Dragon results from the fact that he fails to adjust to the, uh, to the Mercurial changes in attack. Paul Bauman points, to, uh, points out that the contrast uh, in the weapon used between Lee and Dan Ilosanto in the Game of Death reflects the Taoist preference for flexibility over rigidity. Megan Morris uh, approaches the motif of adaptability from the perspective of cultural pedagogy. She writes that the idea of being adaptive is commonplace in martial arts cinema as of many self-development regime. One common observation among these critics and scholars is that they see the connection among Lee's action choreography, uh, JKD martial art philosophy, and Taoist ideas. Of these three dimensions, uh, the last one is often overlooked. Keywords such as flow, fluidity, uh, adaptability frequently appear. There is not much elaboration on how and why they connect to the Taoist teaching in the first place. Undoubtedly, as Bauman argued earlier this year in this seminar, uh, Taoism in bits, such fragmentary uh, cultural translation of Taoism may promote new possibility of interpretation and prompts us to contemplate, uh, contemplate the complexity of, of the tricultural process. However, it is also fruitful to incorporate genuine Taoism into the discussion without an essentialist agenda. 
Before elucidating the Taoist connection of JKD uh, philosophy, it is also uh, important to acknowledge the fact that various schools of Oriental philosophy uh, influenced Li, so such as um, Zen Buddhism, and also you know through the works of Alan Watts and Daisuke Suzuki, and the writings of Jidu uh, Krishnamurti. The post uh, the post-war United States counterculture also play a uh, key part because um, you know Lee incorporate all uh, different kinds of you know schools into his uh, formulation of JKD ideas. If that's the case, it is necessary to question and clarify the often assumed Taoist connection of uh, Lee's martial art philosophy and performance. And in so doing, it would be possible to identify the distinctive roles that different Chinese philosophical schools play in Kung Fu cinema and their specific aesthetic manifestation through a particular martial arts style. Wu nothingness uh, is one of the most significant concepts that forms the metaph metaphysical basis of Taoism. The most elaborate discussion of Wu is found in uh, Dao De Jing, uh, a philosophical classic uh, ascribed to Laozi. It has, a cosmo it has cosmological, material, and sociopolitical meanings. Cosmologically, it refers to the primal state where being and non-being are not yet separated or named. In this sense, it is regarded as equivalent to the Taoist Tao. Materially, it refers to the concept uh, of absence in the physical world of uh, things invisible, intangible, and insignificant. Sociopolitically, it refers to a method of governance uh, which is called Wu Wei in action, which I translate, based not on making interference or achievement, but aiding the natural growth and development of the society. The martial meaning of Wu, uh, nothingness, is not explicit in Dao De Jing as Lao Zi is known for his anti-war stance. However, one can see Wu, nothingness, implicit connection to martial art practice through the concept of fan, reversal, which is described by Lao Zi as the movement of Dao. Fan uh, has a double meaning, referring to negation, xiang fan, and circulation, fu fan. In Taoism, the universe comprises the absence and the presence, or presence and the absence. It is the interaction that generates and sustains all things. However, Lao Zi plays uh, special attention to the absence. For example, he privileges emptiness, xu, over concrete, concreteness, shi. Besides, Lao Zi describes such movement of the presence and the absence is a process of circulation. Despite their reproduction and amplification, they would eventually return to a state of tranquility. In Lee's films, negation and circulation are two key motifs, signifying the martial ideation of Wu, nothingness. Lee's emphasis on emptiness shows, uh, you know, first of all, negation. It is demonstrated in you know, choreography, cinematography, and narrative. Choreogra uh, choreographically, it is embodied in Lee's alteration of attacking pattern and incorporation of fake moves. Lee's initial defeat in crucial fight scenes is often caused by his use of straightforward attacks. The turning point, uh, very often, is the moment when he uses fake moves that make his, oppo uh, make his attack unpredictable. As Colin said yesterday, it's the breaking of, of his own rhythm other, or the opponent's rhythm that characterize that nothingness. This pattern is with uh, Rob Will, Chuck Norris in The Way of the Dragon. Cinematographically, Lee uses special effects such as slow motion and ghosting effect to visualize the motif of emptiness, most notably in Lee's fights with Wilson and Norris. The, mis the misconception about the use of special effect is that it is not always about the amplification of emotion, as David Bordwell uh, has claimed. It is true that techniques such as rapid zoom and close facial expressions are means to highlight the emotional intensity or content. Yet these techniques can be used to create a sense of tranquility as well. What matters is the purpose and the meaning, not the mediation itself. Narratively, Lee uses philosophical dialogue and his fighting with different martial arts style to stress the emptiness of his JPG principle, exemplified by the beginning of the Ender Dragon and also the pagoda structure of the Game of Death. Compared to the motif of negation embodied by emptiness, the motif of circulation is less diverse in its rep representation on screen. It is primarily manifested in the choreography, particularly through the circular movements. 
the circular movement is not only embodied in Lee's martial art action, but also uh, in his weapon use, namely uh, the nunchaku. In his fight with Suzuki in Fist of Fury, uh, Lee wields his nunchaku in constant uh, circular pattern. Circular movement is not only cinematically appealing, uh, but also intimately connected to how nunchaku works. First, the spinning force of nunchaku is generated through bouncing movement of the partitioner body. Second, the maximum power is generated through the circular motion when one wheels it over the head and turning the whole body around. Right? Furthermore, nunchaku is also a weapon signifying the second meaning of circulation, which is the eventual return to a state of stability after amplification. It manifests uh, the martial ideation of nothingness in the sense that it is moving and not moving at the same time. One end of nunchaku has to be static, so the other end can be in action. Despite his showcasing of complex nunchaku techniques, Lee always emphasizes control and stability. This is the reason why one of the gangsters hits himself after picking up Lee's nunchaku in the way of the dragon. In brief, um, the Tao's Wu nothingness is represented as negation and circulation in Lee's films. The negation dimension is embodied by the, uh, by the motif of emptiness, whereas circulation by circular pattern and the motif of tranquility. Among the three representational strategy, Lee puts most emphasis on choreography, followed by cinematography and narrative. This is not to say that the latter two are not evidence, rather the focus is to treat his martial arts uh, as embodied knowledge rather than merely a spectacle. Um, conclusion. In a dialogue on language between a Japanese and inquirer, Martin Heidegger suggests that perhaps a true encounter between East Asian and European existence uh, is still not taking place, in spite of all assimilation and intermixtures. This statement may have been right in the context of Bruce Lee's film if one refuses to trace the philosophical and aesthetic roots of cinematic kung fu. At the start of Enter the Dragon, Lee refused to his disciple that martial art learning is like a finger pointing to the moon. One of the interpretations is that the finger represents the techniques and the mood, the combat itself. The former is only a reference and should not be the focus of martial art practice. After showing people where the moon is, one should forget about the finger and appreciate the moon for its own sake. Applying this scene to the concept of martial ideation, one needs to focus on not on the reproduction and amplification of action and stasis, uh, but their stabilization. In so doing, it reaches a state of quietness and tranquility. This proposes a paradigmatic shift in the study of martial arts cinema, namely from that of emotional content, content to emotional content, uh, a key phrase that key, uh, Lee keeps repeating in the above scene. More importantly, the new framework reveals that Lee's intervention is not alone in the development of Kung Fu cinema on a macro perspective. My theory is that the concept of martial ideation in Kung Fu cinema is tripartite. Uh, apart from the martial ideation of Wu nothingness, which is derived from Jeet Kune Do's principle of adapting in Bruce Lee's films, two other kinds of martial ideation are Ren, uh, humaneness, from Hong Gao's emphasis of holding, uh, in the Wong Fei Hong films, and Guan in Cyphernus, uh, from Wing Chun's attention to listening, Ting Chao, in the Yip Man biopics. These three concepts expand the current scholarship by reconnecting the often separated dimensions of Kung Fu cinema, which are the martial, uh, the aesthetic, the philosophical, the cinematic, and the socio-political. In so doing, one can foresee what Heidegger calls a true encounter European existence in the field of Kung Fu cinema. Thank you very much. <laughs>